Okay, guys, this is our table saw. Um, how many of you have actually used a table saw? Have any of you? A couple, okay. Um, all right, so why do we call it a table saw? This is like a table. Okay, it's a big table and it's got a saw blade um, that comes up, all right? Some people kind of get confused. They hear table saw, they think it's a machine that's used to cut tables, which you can cut a table, right? Um, but anyway, all right, so um, we have our big table. What might we call this thing that slides? A fence, right? Just like the other machines. You have a table and you have a fence, all right? This fence slides to whatever width we're trying to cut, and there's a ruler right along the fence with a needle that you can look at in the plexiglass piece right here, um, and we can very accurately and easily set the fence to whatever width we're trying to cut, okay? Don't put your hands there, please. Um, so. We've talked about so far doing cross cutting, right, at the radial arm saw. We've talked about doing curved cuts at the scroll saw and the band saw. What type of cuts will we use the table saw for? Yeah, what are they called? Yes, very good, a rip cut. All right, so we do mostly rip cutting on the table saw. We can do cross cutting, it can be set up for that, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. All right. Um, on the table saw, there's two main controls that we need to be aware of. All right, and I'm going to show you guys from this one because you really can't see them behind here. So if we look at our smaller table saw, the wheel that faces the operator, that is the wheel that raises and lowers the blade. The wheel on the side tilts the blade to different angles. So most of the time, you're only going to be worried about the wheel that faces the operator. And if you look, there's a little locking knob right in the center. So you want to make sure this is unlocked and loosened when you're ready to turn it. And then when you've got it adjusted, you can lock it down. Okay? So back to our big table saw. All right? Okay. So we can see we've got a pretty big blade, right? This is a 12-inch circular saw blade, and the other one is a 10-inch circular saw blade. So you can see um, we can cut a pretty thick piece of wood with this table saw. Um, by the way, guys, for today's lesson, just so you can see what's going on, I've removed our blade guard and I've also re removed our splitter. Tomorrow, when we actually use the table saw, we're going to put that back on so you can see, um, and we'll talk about some of the safety features of the blade guard and the splitter, all right? Um, so, if I have this board here, okay, and I wanted to make a rip cut, could I cut it the way the blade is set? Would it work? Yeah. yeah, it would absolutely work. Is it safe though? No. Absolutely not. So the correct way to set the blade height is bringing the teeth, these are the teeth, slightly above the board, just like that, okay? That's all you need. Um, so as long as it's just a little bit above the piece, we're good to go. So that's the first thing we wanna set. Second thing we wanna set is our rip fence. What size do we wanna make this board? All right, so I'm gonna measure this one here. This is right now 10 and 3 eighths. So I'm gonna take it down to 10 and 1 fourth. So I'm only taking an eighth inch off. All right, so I'm gonna set it 10 and 1 fourth, lock it down. And just as far as how to stand and how to hold your board, um, I'm always gonna stand to the left, okay? I never wanna stand directly behind the board. And we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is pretend just like I'm bowling, my hand's going to be facing the ground, all right, my right hand, and we're going to push the board up until I get to the edge of the table. Meanwhile, my left hand is holding the board against the fence. So we've heard this before, right? Down on the table, up against the fence. All right, when I get to this point, I'm going to flip my hand around with my thumb pointing down. You can see my fingers are spread out, so I have a lot of control of this board. All right, I'm gonna push it all the way through, just like this. When I get close to the blade, my left hand is gonna go away from the blade, I'm gonna set it on the table for support. I'm gonna pass it all the way past the blade to a catch person. Does anybody like to volunteer to be a catch person? Avenue, you got yeah. it? All right, buddy, thank you. So you're, all you're gonna do is take the board. When I get to this point, he's not gonna pull it, he's not gonna twist it, um, he's just gonna grab the board away from me. So once I let go, he'll take the board, and his job is done, okay? Um, all right, thank you, sir. So um, I want you guys to watch where I'm standing, how my hand is gonna work, 
throughout the whole cut. Notice that even though the cut will be finished right at this point, I'm not gonna let go. I'm gonna push completely past the blade. And then Avenue is gonna grab my board, okay? All right, we ready? All right, by the way, our dust collector uh, blast gate is right here. But since it's not gonna run today, just because we'd have to turn it on and off, um, we're not gonna bother with it. But normally that would be where you open your blast gate, okay? Start stop switch is right below the table here. You ready? All right, here we go. All right, guys, as I was making that cut, did any of you notice the other edge of the board? What kind of edge do we have here? Yeah, it's a jointed edge, nice straight, 90 degrees and everything. So that provides a nice straight edge to go against the fence. If we had a piece without a jointed edge like this, you think that could be a problem? Absolutely, so what could we do? You could joint it. You could also be there for a whole school year trying to get this straight. So what you could do is get a ruler, draw a straight line, and then at the bandsaw, you could cut on the line and then go to the jointer. All right, so that's another little trick. But we always need a jointed edge when we use the table saw, okay? All right, um, so we talked about how to adjust it, how to make the cut, all right? What if the board that we're cutting is not quite this big? Let's say the, um, fence has to make a two or four inch cut or one inch cut, half inch cut. Do you think it's safe to get my hand in there where the blade is? No. No, so what can we use? Push sticks. Okay, push sticks, which we've been making, oh sorry, <laughs> we've been making for a while, right? Um, so these are the push sticks we use at this table saw, the longer ones, okay? Because it's a bigger table, so we have more of a reach. Um, so my rule is what? What's the rule generally for the machines? You guys remember? Safety margin. You have five fingers, you keep your hands five inches away. So if the piece we're cutting is five inches wide or less, we use push sticks. All right, that means the distance between the blade and the fence has to be less than five inches or five to use push sticks, okay? So if I take this board, which we just said is what width? Because we just cut it. 10 and 1 fourth. All right, I'm gonna take this board and I wanna cut a half inch strip, okay? Do I need push sticks for this? Yes, because the distance between the blade and the fence is only a half inch, even though this board is bigger than five inches, right? Um, okay, so this is gonna be the same exact process. Actually, I'm gonna bump it up to five eighths, make it a little bit bigger. All right, same process. I'm gonna use one push stick to hold it against the fence one push stick to go past the blade, okay, and hold it down on the table. And when I get my left hand up near the blade, what am I gonna do? Let go. I'm, well, sort of. I'm gonna take my hand, set it out. I'm gonna continue holding with my right hand, okay? All right, here we go. You ready? So now you're gonna have to take not only this board, but also the little piece as well. All right, here we go. So there's just a basic cut with push sticks, okay? Um, now, I'm gonna wait till this blade stops. Okay. Let's say I don't feel comfortable using my hand for something bigger than five inches, right? Let's say I wanna cut this a little bit more and I'm thinking I'm gonna be really safe and I'm gonna use a push stick. Anybody know what the problem with this is? Why is this dangerous? Okay, now there is. I'm gonna take my hand away. Why is this a problem? It was controlling that one little area. Yes, you've got this huge board going through here and this little tiny push stick holding it. You don't have enough control. So it's actually safer once it's bigger than five inches to get your hand in there where you can spread your fingers out and hold the board down tightly, okay? Um, 
That brings me to the next topic of kickbacks. Does anyone know what a kickback is? Okay, generally it's when the blade grabs a hold of the board, shoots it back towards the operator at about 100 miles an hour. That's not an exaggeration, that's like a literal number, okay? Um, so let's talk about how these kickbacks happen. Number one, most common way, is when the board comes off the fence. So if you guys see, when we get to the end of the cut, you guys see the gap at the back of the fence here? Okay, that's really important to know about. Um, Think of it this way. The blade is spinning towards you, okay? So the front of the blade is going down towards the table, right? What's the back of the blade doing? Lifting up away from the table. So if you're at the back of the blade and you start to come off the fence like this, which way does the blade want to lift that piece? Up, up okay? So um, the reason the table saw is considered the most dangerous machine we'll work with is because of kickbacks, all right? Generally, all along, we've said as long as your hand is away from the blade, your hand doesn't go near the sandpaper on the sanding disc, whatever, you'll be fine. The difference here is when you have a kickback, it's going to lift that board up, pull the board back, and look where my hand is. Okay, it can actually pull your hand right across the top of that blade. All right, so that's where it becomes um, quite scary. Okay, I've got some samples of kickbacks that I want to pass around and talk about a little bit. All right, um, most of these samples came from Millersville, where I went to school. Um, the teacher there at the time, not very great. He would just give like a five minute demonstration of the table saw. And for somebody like me who had a background, that was okay. But for other of my classmates who were going for like to teach computers, didn't have a background, um, they didn't know any better. So at least once a week, we had a kickback at Millersville, which is not good, okay? Um, so I'm gonna pass these around, see if you guys notice anything that is kind of very similar, okay? Here's another good one right here. Um, here's another one. This one hit a wall and broke, and we could never find the other piece. So it's somewhere in that room, who knows? Anybody noticing a pattern here? What's that? Just pass this one around. Anybody notice a pattern? What do they all have? Like a curved cut, right? That's because that board travels over the top of the blade, all right? And that's how that happens. Here's one in plastic, send that around. Okay, and these last couple I can uh, share with you because I know exactly how they happened, all right? Um, this was the first one that ever happened to me, okay? This one here happened on my table saw at home. The way this happened, it could never happen here just because of the design of our table saw, all right? You guys see this white table here? This is called an auxiliary table. So basically the original table stopped here and they put a bigger fence on and another table. Well, the saw I had at home at the time did not have this extra table. So the fence was set outside the table, okay? And as I was cutting, before I even knew anything was wrong, this piece of wood was at the back of my room, okay? What happened was this slid underneath the fence in the middle of my cut and twisted and went flying back, okay? Luckily, my blade height was set properly um, and my hand was far enough away that I didn't get caught up, okay? Um, but you can check that one out, send that around, okay? This one here is a pretty interesting one. This happened the first day I was student teaching, okay, um, out in Pennsylvania. The student was using the table saw, um, felt that they wanted to be super safe and this was also a level one class, and they decided to use a push stick, and they were holding the push stick off to the very side, as far away from the blade as they possibly could get, and they felt this was safe. Why did this cause a kickback? There's no control, and what else? Yes, it pushed, actually pushed the board away from the fence into the blade. So when this one kicked back, you guys can see the very similar curved pattern all right, it went flying back so far that not only did it break the piece it was cutting, 
but it hit the wall so hard that it snapped the piece here and it's taped back together. So you guys can pass that around and see that. Okay. This one was uh, quite a story here. This happened here last year when I was using the table saw. All right. We were making uh, moldings for the tiny furniture project. And what we've been doing is we route the edge of a board, which you guys are going to learn about the router. And we have this decorative edge to it. And we need to cut away our molding. OK? So I had two cuts. I had to cut one way. And then 90 degrees, I had to cut another way. So we have a strip of molding. So on my second cut, this was a bigger board at the time, by the way. I had it like this, so my molding was between the fence and the blade, just like this, OK? Um, at the time, the push stick wasn't low enough to grab onto the molding as well. So that was a problem. And my other problem was I forgot to tell my catch person or remind them that not only did they have to grab the big board, but they also had to grab the little piece of molding that was there, OK? So we made my cut. And after I let go, that piece of molding was sitting between the blade and the fence. OK? And surprisingly, it stayed there until I told my catch person to grab the molding. And as soon as they grabbed it, they might have pulled it off the fence just a tiny bit. And it shot back at about 100 miles an hour all the way to the wall. Now, the scary thing is I had somebody standing right here, which do you think this is a bad place to stand when somebody's using the table saw? Absolutely. That's considered a kickback zone. So you never want to stand back in that area when somebody's running these saws. Um, the scary thing is that piece of wood, um, he didn't know what happened, but he felt the wind of a piece of wood going right under his neck. Um, so thankfully it missed him because that could have been a serious situation. Um, and it missed all four students that were working at the glue up table. And it hit the wall so hard that this piece split into one, two, three, four, five pieces. OK? So when I say about 100 miles an hour, that's not an exaggeration. All right, I'm going to pass this around. This is quite interesting to look at. Could that one have been prevented? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. OK? I could have had a better push stick. I could have told my catch person to take that piece and remember to take it. All right? So there's better ways that that could have been handled. All right? Um, all right. So we've talked about push or um, kickbacks happening when the board comes off the fence. Okay, so we got to figure out ways to prevent that from happening. Well, first of all, all right, if I think I'm being super safe by keeping my hand as far away from the blade as possible, you guys see what happens to that board? How it's coming off the fence? So it's actually safer to keep your hand in the middle where you can put some pressure towards the fence. Okay, much safer that way. Tomorrow when we install the blade guard and the splitter, I'm gonna also show you how that helps prevent the board from coming off the fence, okay? A um, Couple other ways some kickbacks can happen. All right, this is a board that I cut about halfway just to show this particular situation, all right? Sometimes wood has what's called internal stress, all right? You're in the middle of your cut and you guys see this gap here? that the saw blade made, that's called a saw kerf. All right, even when you use a hand saw, that's called a kerf. So sometimes the stress inside the board will force those two pieces of wood to squeeze back together. What do you think happens then? If the wood's squeezing back together, what's happening to the blade? It's getting, cold. It's getting pinched. The blade does not like to get pinched. So when that happens, it will take that board like 10 times that power, OK? So to prevent that, again, you're going to see tomorrow when we have a splitter in place how that prevents even internal stress from happening, OK? Um, another way, very common, this is a miter gauge. This is used for cross cutting, all right? So if I wanted to make a cross cut, I can set my board up. I can measure and mark a line. I can hold the one knob and hold the board just like this against my little fence and slide it through the blade to make a cross cut. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is, let's say I want, I don't know, a hundred of these cut at two inches long. So I figure out, oh, let me try and set my fence two inches and I'll just go right up against the fence and run my miter gauge through. Why will this cause a kickback when I use the fence? Look where my hands are. Is there anything holding this piece after it gets cut? 
So where is that piece going to stay? It's going to be stuck between the blade and the fence, right? That doesn't, um, the blade doesn't like that. So anytime a board's stuck between the blade and the fence, it's going to kick back. So if you do this, this is a guaranteed kickback every single time, all right? So we never use the miter gauge with the fence at the same time. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Um, what if we're in the middle of a cut and something's not going right and we decide to pull backwards? Do you think that could cause a kickback? Yes, yes it can. So you never want to pull backwards. But you're stuck. You can't do anything. So what should you do? Turn off the machine. Okay. Turn off the machine. But guess what? I'm too scared. I don't want to take either of my hands off of this board to turn off the machine. What could I do? Yeah, for some help. Yeah, who would I ask? Yes, the catch person, who, by the way, is going to be me. Okay? For this school year, for the most part, I will be your catch person. So I'm going to be watching your every move. Okay? Um, as you get into level two, that's when I'll have you guys kind of help each other and be each other's catch person. That's fine. Um, but I will be your catch person. Okay? Um, all right, so we talked about that. What if I tried like freehand cutting? You think that would end well? No. Okay, so we never freehand cut. All right? Okay, a couple stories. Um, I told you guys I'd have a couple stories for you, as always. Um, so let me get started. All right? First one happened many, many years ago when my dad first started teaching um, his first year. All right? And I told you guys my dad was also an industrial arts teacher. So at the time, he taught metal shop. And his room was set up very much like our room. We have a wood shop, an office right in the middle, and then a metal shop. So he was on his free period. He happened to walk into his office and look into the wood shop exactly at the time that this injury happened. Um, there was an eighth grade student who was given like a two minute lesson on the table saw. Here's how you do it. Have fun, basically. Okay. There was no guard on the saw. The blade was raised way too high. All right. He was cutting a piece of maple, which maple's hard, so what would you guys think you would have to be careful about? If you go faster or slower? slower? Definitely slower, okay? So maple's more of a tough piece to work with, not as user-friendly. Um, he was ripping a piece about two inches wide with no push stick. Does that follow the rule? No, no. you have to have a push stick, all right? And he had no catch person. So a lot of bad things were going on. Um, the teacher actually happened to walk out of the room for whatever reason, when this accident happened. So he was running his piece through, blades way too high, board kicked back. Right as my dad walked into his office, he watched that kid amputate the ends of these two fingers, his pointer and his middle finger, okay? So now we go to get the nurse. Um, nurse comes down. The wood shop guy's like ready to pass out. The nurse asked my dad to lift the table saw up onto its back and dig through the sawdust to try and find this kid's fingers which he was not able to find, okay? Um, gruesome story, could that have been prevented? 100% it could have been prevented, right? Um, as you'll find with all these stories. All right, story number two. This is a college professor of mine who had this happen probably 30 years ago now. Um, he was supervising a student teacher. So he was in a high school, very much like this. Um, kids were working, and there was a student who was cutting a piece. Again, same problem. Uh, the board was kind of getting stuck, okay? So he went over to help. Um, instead of maybe turning the machine off and trying to figure out what's going on, he was standing, look where I'm standing, directly behind the board, okay, which is first mistake, um, and he tried to just force the board through the saw, all right? In doing that, the board kicked back. It hit him directly in the groin. And ladies, I'm sorry if you're um, easily embarrassed, but he was obviously in a tremendous amount of pain. So he kind of played it off. He left the room, went into a private office, and went to check out what happened. Uh, and there was blood running down his leg. Okay? The medical term for his injury was loss of testicle. Okay? Um, and some of you may laugh, but it certainly isn't funny. Okay? Um, so, you know, we think about our fingers all the time, but you got to remember that this is not the only thing that can be injured. Right? Um, how could that have been prevented? Okay, you never stand directly behind the board. Never. Okay? Um, if he had not forced the board, guys, do you have questions? Okay. 
If he had not stand, stood directly behind the board, that would never have happened. We wouldn't have this conversation, okay? Um, we don't force the board through. You figure out why it's binding up and then deal with it, okay? Um, so definitely another preventable accident, all right? The last accident that I'm gonna talk about happened right here on this machine, okay? And this happened about 15, 14, 15 years ago before I was here, all right? There was a student who was making a pretty advanced cut, all right? Not your traditional, just rip cut. Um, no blade guard, teacher was not right with the student. Um, and the student did have a kickback and amputated four fingers, okay? Um, at that point, the student was rushed to uh, the hospital and they were sewn back on but I believe that student has lost some sort of feeling and you know movement a little bit in their fingers okay at that point Hamilton Township said every single table saw and all the schools have to go okay clearly that didn't happen and the reason it didn't happen is as dangerous as our table saws can be they are just as useful so it's impossible to build the projects we build without a table saw all right, so all of these accidents are 100% preventable, um, and you guys will see that especially tomorrow when we talk about the safety of the blade guard and the splitter, okay, and how they prevent all these accidents, okay? Um, all right, questions so far about anything? Before we actually get into having you guys make your cut, I want to do a little review and then you'll notice that the guard has been installed on actually both table saws. So we're going to talk about the guard and how it works, bless you, um, and how the guard will prevent kickbacks and protect our hands, okay? Um, first of all, why do we call this a table saw again? Okay, you got a big table and you've got a saw blade below, right? Um, all right, so how do we want to raise and lower the blade? How would that be done? The wheel thing. Okay, the hand wheel. The one on the side tilts the blade. The one facing me is the one to raise and lower the blade. How high should I raise the blade? Just, just so the teeth are a little bit above. All right, so the, the teeth should be just a little bit above the board. So this is the board that we're going to be working on today. I'm going to slide my, what's this thing called? Fence. fence. Very good. All right, slide the fence out of the way. I'm going to start to raise my blade. A little squeaky. Um, so is that a good height? Yes, we're right above the board. We're good to go, okay? Um, all right, so I set my blade height. Now I need to figure out where to set my fence, okay? So this board right now measures 11 and 1 fourth. I'm gonna set it so we're only taking an eighth inch off of every cut. That's basically the same size as the blade, all right? So if it's 11 and 1 fourth, I'm gonna set this to 11 and 1 eighth. All right, now, just like the other fence, this has a ruler on it, all right? The other one's a lot more simple because there's one line, all right? This one's called a unifence. Um, and what's nice about this is sometimes this big tall fence gets in the way. So we can take it, slide it, and turn it down, and use it this way, and we have a short fence, okay? Most of the time we'll use it the other way, though. So um, there's two lines on this ruler, all right? And that's the whole reason I'm going over this. So most of the time, we're gonna use the um, line that's closer to the blade on the left side. And when you come up, I'll point to which line we're gonna use. All right, and we're gonna bump the fence over towards the um, hallway. All right, two little lines. We're gonna go an eighth inch. All right, and I'll help you with that. Now, the other thing about this one that's a little tricky, the other one, you lift up, it unlocks, you push down, and it locks. Very simple. This one here, you guys see that moving? Okay, that's called a cam lock. And if you have it turned straight like this, it will not lock, okay? It'll go down, but the fence will not lock in place because there's an open track here. So we, what we need to do is make sure we turn it so that that cam turns. And if the handle points perfectly straight towards the floor, we're in good shape. All right, what I will always do is kind of grab the fence and shake it to make sure it's locked. Okay, um, but you'll get a feel for that as you come up here. Um, all right, so just to review from yesterday, where should I stand? Should I stand directly behind the board? No, no always to the side, all right? My left hand is gonna push up against the fence. fence. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ballsy. All right, so my left hand's gonna hold the board up against the fence. My right hand, just like I'm bowling, right? It's gonna, my fingers are towards the ground. I'm gonna push through, all right? And when I get to the table, what am I gonna do? Flip my hand around. My thumb is gonna hold the board, all right, behind the board. I don't want my thumb out like this. Why not? Yeah, okay. And again, I'll be watching everything that you're doing. So I'll pro I may tell you to scoot your thumb back this way, okay? So I'm gonna hold here. When the board gets to the beginning of the guard, like right here, it ends. What should I do with my other hand? I'm gonna set it out on the table, and then I'm gonna pass it right about here. The blade is gonna finish cutting. Do I let go? No. No, I go completely past the blade, and what's gonna happen? My catch person's gonna take it away from me, right? Okay, um, now let's talk about the guard a little bit. I have another version of the guard. It's the exact same one that's on the saw, okay? Um, there's three parts to this guard, okay? And I actually like this one because it works very well and it doesn't really get in the way too often. Um, this plastic shield, this is like worst case scenario. Um, let's say you do somehow have a kickback. This shield will protect your hands, okay? Um, it's safety glass. It's just like our safety glasses are made out of. Um, and so this will protect us from the saw blade, all right? But underneath here, we have this big piece of sheet metal, okay? This is the splitter. Does anybody know or want to take a guess what the splitter actually does? Colbert? It'll separate the wood from the part you're cutting so it doesn't pinch in on the blade. Oh, exactly, okay? Um, if you guys remember yesterday, we talked about that piece that I cut halfway and there was that saw kerf, that opening. Well, sometimes you get a board with internal stress, right? And the board wants to close back on the blade. Well, that can't happen with a splitter because it's gonna squeeze this um, piece of metal and it's gonna not pinch the blade, all right? So it'll prevent that. Um, the other thing the splitter prevents, remember we, how else does a kickback happen? What's a common way? When you, the back of the board pushes away. Okay, you guys remember that. When we said the board comes off the fence in the back, um, it'll cause a kickback. Well, here you've got this wall, the splitter, that's gonna prevent the board from coming off the fence. All right, so great feature. Now let's say somehow the board still wants to kick back. Okay, board still wants to kick back. We have these little teeth here. All right, these here are called anti-kickback paws. All right, and basically they allow the board to go in one direction. All right, the way we normally feed the board through. But if it tries to kick back, these teeth will bite into the board and will not allow it to slide back. All right, so three great features that keep us safe. All right, I'm gonna pass this around. You guys can check it out. And we're gonna get set up for our cut. Okay, um, can we see the board again? Thank you, sir. All right, so we've got the blade height set. We're gonna set our fence back to 11 and 1 8. Just like that. Okay, and we're gonna make a, just a practice cut um, to review, and then we'll get you guys all started. Over here, we have our blast gate. So we're gonna open this up today, and if you could turn the dust collector on, that would be great. And what you guys are gonna do, actually, hold on one second. What you guys are gonna do, as you come up, all right, we have a nice little line here. Come up, you'll make your cut. Go back around so we're not staying in the kickback zone, right? If you're over here and you're done, Please continue to pay attention. Do not talk, all right? Because we all need to concentrate when we're doing this. All right, so even if you're done, watch what's going on. Don't talk, because it's either gonna distract whoever's doing the cutting or me, all right? So that's really important. All right, you can turn the dust collector on. Our start-stop switch is right below here. Here we go. a true kickback all right that may happen it's not gonna hurt you um, all right questions about that before we get started all right let's do it I'm gonna move around to be your catch person Come on up and we're gonna leave the saw running all right all right so you're gonna move here's your line I'm gonna move two lines that way from your left
Great job. Okay? Keep it on. Yep. Okay, we're going an in eight inch. So a couple lines that way, perfect. Lock it up. Alright, you're going to stand to the side. This hand holds the board. All the way through. Great job. Okay, we're going to move this line, two little lines that way. Good. Lock it up. Okay, stand over here. Push the board up on the fence. Okay, flip this hand around. All the way through. Great job. All of you did a great job on your first time with the table saw and I'm sure most of you were probably somewhere from kind of nervous to very nervous or somewhere in between, okay? And that's fine, that's normal. Um, you'll notice that I watched every single thing you did, right? And remember, I'm gonna be your catch person at least for most of this school year, all right? At some point, um, I might feel that all of you are comfortable enough and you know what you're doing enough that I can let you guys be each other's catch person. Um, but for now, I will be doing that. So I'm gonna be watching your every move. Are you standing where you should? Um, are, is your hands in the correct position? Okay. Um, some of you might be wondering, why do we have to start off with our hand down and then flip our hand around? Does anyone know why you do that? It'll push down the board. Okay, if I'm back here pushing like this, the board's gonna lift off the table. All right, so this is an easy way to kind of help support the board without doing that, okay? So that's the reason for that, very good. Um, now, over at our little table saw, we have these cool push sticks, the little sharks, all right? Um, the other ones we made, the smaller push sticks would work fine as well, okay? These were from uh, Springfield High School, which I mentioned before. Um, I went to visit there. Their kids design all these cool different push sticks and um, you know, in their free time, if they're waiting for finish to dry or glue to dry, um, they've got all different types of fish that are push sticks. So if you want to design your own, that'd be cool too. These are like his and hers. You got the girl here and this is the guy, you know? So it's kind of funny, um, but anyway, they work just as well. When do we actually need to use these push sticks? You guys remember? When it's not five inches or two inches. Okay, so if the cut, the space between the fence and the blade is five inches wide or less, then you need push sticks, okay? Is it safe to use a push stick if the cut is bigger than five? No, because you don't have enough control, right? Um, what if I took this wide board like this and I needed a two inch strip cut for, from this? Would I use a push stick for that? Yes, I would, right? Because the space between the blade and the fence is only two inches, even though the board is bigger. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, all right, so let's do a quick review and then we'll get you guys doing your safety test. Um, is there ever a time we would want to saw freehand without the fence? No. no. Okay. Um, should the guard be in place when you guys are using the saw? Yes. Absolutely. All right, when rip cutting, do we stand directly behind the board? No. No, and I think you'll remember from yesterday's story, you'll probably never forget that. Um, okay, how high do we adjust the saw blade? Just a little bit, Just a little bit above the board, very good. Um, let's see, is there ever a time you would use the table saw without a catch person? No. No, very good. Um, is there ever a time we'd wanna pull the board backwards out of a cut? No. no. All right, and what do we always wear? Very good. All right, guys, let's put our glasses back. Thank you, and we'll get our test out.